There are two aspects of sizing the rain garden. First, the depth, which will determine the depth of water that it can hold, and then the area, which will determine the total volume of water that it can hold. We'll start with the depth. One goal that is well agreed on is that the depth should be equivalent to the water that can infiltrate in 24 hours. Limiting ponding to 24 hours will allow a wide selection of plants that you can choose from, since there are many plants that can withstand wet feet for a day or less. Also, a 24-hour time for infiltration will eliminate mosquito problems, since mosquito eggs take longer than a day to hatch. So how much water can infiltrate in a day? The purpose of this test is to see how fast water will flow into the ground into the subsoil at the level that your rain garden will be. The test will consist of digging a hole, then making sure it's wet if it's not already wet, and then measuring how fast water flows into the bottom of the hole. So you want to dig a hole about a foot in diameter, or it couldn't be two feet in that diameter, there's no limit. If the soil is so compacted that it's difficult to dig, it's probably not a good location for a rain garden. It's best to do this test in the wet spring so that the soil will be wet all around. But if you didn't think to do that, you can still conduct the test by pre-wetting the soil. So first, pour the, fill the hole with water and let it drain out. You want to actually do this a couple times, which might take up to a day. But if, after that, your soil will be thoroughly wet and the test will be more accurate. Pour water in the hole, just keeping it at the level of the subsoil, so probably no more than about six inches. Now you need to get a marker together, some kind of a marker. You can use a nail or a pencil or some kind of a stick and have a timer handy. So most people will probably use a phone. You could use a kitchen timer if you wanted to. So at the same time, you want to put your marker in the hole at the level of the water and start your timer. After an hour has passed, come back and measure how much the water level has fallen beneath your marker. If we do that here, we see it's gone just more than an inch. After two hours, come back and do the same thing. Measure how far the water has fallen below your marker. In this case, it's about an inch and three quarters. Each time you measure, you want to mark the time and the drop in water level. So for example, I'm going to mark one hour here and one inch here. After two hours, I had one and three quarters inch. And you can keep doing that for as many hours as you measure, probably six or more. And then you calculate the percolation rate by just dividing the drop by the time, which in this case is one inch per hour, and in this case, it's 1.75 over 2, which is about 0 0.9 inches per hour. After you finish all your measurements, you want to make an average of them. And you can be pretty rough, but if we had, say, 0 0.8, 1.2, 1.11, we'd have an average of about 1 inch per hour. If after one or two measurements you find that the amount of percolation is very high, say six inches per, uh, or more, you probably don't need to continue the test. You have the information you need, which is that drainage is very good in your soil. So what did you learn from this test? If the percolation rate is an inch per hour or more, your soil is probably well draining enough to have a rain garden. If it's a half inch per hour or less, it's very marginal. You can either construct a shallower rain garden or think about amending the soil with sand and compost so that you'll have a better functioning rain garden. Now that we've decided on the depth, it's time to consider the area, the size and the width of your rain garden. So a common recommendation is to size it to capture one inch of rain on the roof area that drains into your rain garden. But your rain garden can be smaller or larger uh, if that fits better in your yard. The next step is to estimate the area of the roof. But you do need to distinguish the parts of the roof that actually drain into the downspouts that you'll be capturing from other parts of the roof that might drain in another direction. So this rain garden is going to capture 
the flow from this downspout here and this downspout over here. And so we'll be measuring each of those. We'll start with this downspout. So if you look, we, we see that it's capturing this, basically this side of the roof. From the gutter here over to the center line of the roof, which is just above me here, we don't want to measure the rest of the roof that's flowing the other direction. So let's start by measuring. You might want to ask a friend to help you hold the tape measure at this center point. And then I'll just walk over to the edge of the, the roof garden, which is here, and mark that it's 12 feet 9 inches. This roof line is quite complex. It's actually a rectangle with a, a rectangle cutout, which is the patio, which was pervious, so will not count into the rain garden. So what we're doing is actually measuring the entire rectangle, and then we'll subtract the rectangle that's the patio. So we need to measure the size of the patio, starting from the edge there over to the edge of the roof line, which is where it stops capturing the, the water. And so that would be uh, 8 feet 6 inches. To get the other side of the rectangle, we're going to pace out in front of the house. This is not the side that will be flowing into the rain garden, but of course it's the same size as the, the interior, which is what's um, being used. So we're starting where the peak of the roof is. I don't think you can see it. And then we're going to pace the whole length. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 is what I measured out um, even with the edge of the roof here. So 15 times 3 feet per pace is 45 feet, which is the length of the, this side of the rectangle that will drain into the rain garden. An aerial photo like this is very useful since it can help you think through the size and shape of your roof line as well as give you a place to, make your, to mark your measurements. If you don't have an aerial photo, you can still do this. You just need to sketch it out. In this case, this home is part of a fourplex. So I'm going to start by sketching the division between the four units. Now this side is the front. And remember, I paced along it uh, 15 paces, showing that this was 45 feet long. And then from the center of the roof line to the edge was 12 feet 9 inches and the patio area was 8 feet 6 inches. Now you don't actually need to be that precise. With this kind of a calculation, just having two significant digits is more than adequate. So we're going to call this 13 feet and we're going to call this 8 feet. Rounding one up and one down is probably a good idea. So now we have the rectangle, um, which is 21 feet on a side, the 8 plus 13, 45 feet on this side, and then the patio cutout, which is 8 feet by about 25 feet. I didn't make that measurement, but this is an estimate from looking at the photo. So we're trying to find the area of this L shape. So the easiest way to calculate the area of an L shape is to start by calculating the large rectangle and then subtracting the small rectangle. So that's 21 times 45, or 945 square feet. That's the larger rectangle. And then we're going to subtract the smaller rectangle, which is 8 times 25 feet and 8 feet times 25 feet. I don't need a calculator for that. I know that's 200 square feet. Square feet. And so we subtract that and we get 745 square feet. And that's again a little more precise than I need, so I'll just round up and use 750 square feet as the approximate roof area. So if we assume the typical depth of 10 inches, then we only need a rain garden size of 75 square feet, which is a very manageable size for a rain garden.